Hey, y'all. How we doing? Patrick here with Vetted. Um, just saw the Jeremy Corbell uh, interview on Steve-O, and he mentioned something about a sighting that he had that I had never heard of. So I dug into it, and it looks like on his Weaponized podcast, he talked more in depth about it. So we're going to take a look at the clip from Steve-O, Steve-O's podcast, um, and then take a look at the Weaponized clip uh, where he goes into further detail. Um, he didn't see it alone. He saw it with uh, comedian Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. Huge fan of that guy, by the way. Um, and we're going to take a look at a drawing that Dave Foley made of their sighting that I found on Reddit. Um, so I just thought this was interesting. I hadn't heard it. And uh, yeah, let's let's jump in and see what this is all about. Uh, again, if you guys like the video, please hit the like button. That definitely helps out uh, the most. It's free. Uh, and leave a comment. I read them all. So thank you guys so much for participating in that way. Um, tell me what you guys think about this sighting. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's jump in. Right here uh, again. So uh, Jeremy Corbell did a, a brand new interview on Steve-O's Wild Ride podcast. Uh, I love that podcast. I love Steve-O. I love Jackass. I love all of that. Um, so it was great that he had him on. He also did one with Tom DeLong, which is really good. Uh, I'll put a link to that one as well. So again, I'll put links to all of this. Let's uh, check this out. And this, um, can I ask one thing? This is a crazy. So <laughs> that's Oliver Tree. He's guest hosting on this particular episode. If you don't know who he is, he's like some social media influencer guy, YouTuber, uh, does like funny music videos and stuff. Um, I actually don't know much too much about him, but he asked a great question here. Like, this is a big question coming out, but <laughs> have aliens or UAPs or any extraterrestrial interdimensional beings reached out to you as someone who's a spokesperson? Have you had any interaction? Have you seen a ship? Have you had any kind of personal experience? Great question, but I love the way the first part of the question, like, because you're a spokesperson, have the aliens reached out to you? Like... They're just sitting on the spaceship, like, looking down, like, who's the spokesperson? Oh, that guy. Let's go talk to him. Okay, it's not like PR. It's not like reaching out for an interview. I just thought that was funny. But he did ask the important question, have you had an experience? Which is a great question. If you don't want to answer, I understand. No, so I'm, I'm a total... He shouldn't have said that, though. Let your guest decide that. If you give them that out, they may take it. Just let them decide as a podcast host myself book like i have to be you know i feel a duty if if if, if i withhold anything you know I'd, I'd be pilloried for it the thing is is that i am sad to report to you that i'm always the guy with my back turned and we see something cool they scream i'm inside getting my night vision so everybody can see the stars better and there's some ufo so i was always that guy for like ever forever man i never saw shit you know and i, I kind of liked it that way i was like that's pretty cool because no one's going to believe me if I see. So that's interesting that he's been around UFO sightings, but never been the one to see them because uh, he's always running in to get his night vision, apparently. Um, I, I mean, that is kind of funny, but I get what he's saying here. Luckily, right? Luckily, uh, not that long ago, I had a very much more credible than me friend. Uh, his name is Dave Foley. He's a comic, right? Um, from Kids in the Hall. And he was visiting me and he started taking the piss at me being like, ah, come see the UFO expert and don't see a UFO. That's pretty good. You know, he's fucking with me. Not 45 seconds later, I say, Dave, look the fuck up. And that was the first time in my life I can say that I ever saw a craft of unknown origin that was capable of doing something unlike what I know is possible with our known understanding of physics. When you say it's not possible. So this is just... You know, this is not good from Steve. I love Steve-O, but he does this. Like, let him tell his story. And they go on, and Jeremy doesn't tell his UFO story. You know, they interrupt him, and he never gets back to it. Um, so you got to let him speak. got to let him say that stuff. Steve-O's kind of known for that, but, you know, hey, he's, uh, you know, done all kinds of crazy shit. Got to give him a break. Uh, he's sober. Uh, you know, over 10 years. Uh, so we're going to give him a break. So anyway, luckily, 
I found um, the interview on Weaponized. Okay, that's a bad, I paused it on a bad frame there uh, for Jeremy. I didn't mean to do that. Um, luckily on Weaponized podcast, he talks about it. So let's jump in. Okay, let's talk <laughs> about it. Well, I'd like to talk about your adventure. The two of you guys saw yeah. one. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you had never seen one before. I know no, I've never. never seen one that I know of as, as far as I can remember, but you guys had one. <laughs> I love George Knapp, okay? Big fan of George Knapp, but that's an interesting thing. I don't know if I saw one, at least not that I can remember. I think you would remember if you saw a UFO, but I think it's just him being not nervous or anything, but just kind of just something you say off the cuff. So, uh, you know, not trying to be too yeah, stickler here. Uh, but that is kind of funny to say that. But it's also interesting that he hasn't just come out and said, yeah, I saw these UFOs and stuff, right? And Jeremy, right? But he did have one with somebody else, and uh, they're going to talk about it. So let's jump in. Let's hear the story. Yeah. Finally, both of us had one. That's yeah. what, that's, yes. it's a crazy story. I, you know, I love, I, I want to hear Dave explain. We, we both, you know, we saw the same thing, but we both, different things of it really intrigued us. And so I like kind of, hearing what, how Dave experienced it. Yeah, well, I mean, it happened. Um, it was a night, I was just... Okay, before anyone asks, no, they didn't film it. Okay, so I know you're gonna ask that. Where's the video? There isn't a video. They didn't film it. Jeremy Corbell's a filmmaker. And yes, he did not, or no, he did not film this. Now you ask, why didn't he film it? You know, someone um, gets more. He's uh, someone that comments a lot on the videos here on Fedit. Uh, what's up? Um, he also sent me a li link to his music. He's a music producer. Love his music. Anyway. Um, and he mentioned something about he had seen a sighting, but he didn't film it because he was in awe. And I hear that a lot, actually. People having sightings and not filming them because they just don't want to lose it or they're in awe. Um, my cousin, Jarrett in Florida, a couple months ago, I think, or not even that long ago, he um, also saw a UFO, three of them, off the coast in Florida when he was at a bar, and he didn't film it, and he always films stuff, right? But he, again, he was like, I didn't want to lose it. I was in awe. My phone wasn't near me, and I just took it in. And again, I, I hear that a lot from people. So this idea that I, I just wouldn't be so hard on people who don't film this stuff. You know what I mean? We were visiting and we were out walking your dog. Yeah. On a very beautiful starry night. I think, I don't even think there was a moon in the sky that night. I don't think it's, no. it's just the stars were so uh, prominent. And in, I remember watching in the distance, watching the commercial air traffic flying around and just thinking about what a clear, beautiful night it was. And just saying to Jeremy, you know, this would be a good night to see something. This yeah. would be, I'd like, to, you know. And uh, so we're pretty remote, by the way. So, you know, you know, so where we are, Big no, sky, no, light pollution. no light pollution. It was just like a one of those beautiful nights, and you know, walking my pup and just kind of really enjoying the night. And then this guy gets sarcastic. You know? Yeah. Well, I, well, you remember though. I don't. Remember, like, I just remember saying, "I want to see this. Would be a great night to see something." You, no, you no, no, I, no, I no. This is calling you out. Foley goes, "Hey, man, it's so cool coming up to hang out with the UFO expert. I was kind of hoping I'd see a UFO. You know, just kind of digging at me. Yeah. I've never seen one either. Never yeah. really a machine that I could say that's a UFO. But, but within a few moments of yeah. asking to see something, yeah. uh, I think I was looking and I hear and Jeremy goes, "Dave, turn around." And I turn around, and uh, in the distance, there's this. So that's funny that Jeremy says he told Dave, hey, look the fuck up. And Dave remembers it as, hey, turn around. Just interesting, right? The way people remember things. Bright orangey gold thing kind of pulsing with orange gold light and with some white lights on the front of it. That kind of reminds me of the Logan Paul uh, video, right? Uh, that I made a video about yesterday. Um, so that's interesting. It's the front because that's the way it was traveling. Um, and we're looking at it and it's clearly, and, and you see the commercial air traffic all around it and the difference is very stark and it's, well, starts, this was close. First of all, this yeah. was close compared to and other it, air and traffic. it got closer and closer to us and it sort of traveled around this valley to, you know, and, uh, and I think we both were thinking at the same time, uh, I kept thinking, 
this will be like when I'm in my backyard and I see something and I eventually realize it's, oh, it's just something boring. I kept thinking this is going to get boring as it gets closer. Did well, you say I, anything to each other as you're no. watching it? Well, yeah, no. hold on. Let's, yeah, that was weird. So let's get into that. But I want to, what you kind of missed, what I saw. Yeah. So again, I'm, you know, he's taking the piss out of me and I'm thinking, motherfucker. And then I'm, I'm looking and I, and he's standing there and his back is to it. And from a 45 degree angle, which looked from as far as the distance could be from high up, seemed like it came from space. This thing just shot down at a 45 degree angle, just glowing, right? And then it, boom, hits and levels off. And so that was the first thing. And that's when I was able to say, hey, turn yeah. around. Like I, I knew, already knew this was weird. I thought maybe it was a comet or something. I, I thought it would end up being super prosaic. I've never seen bonafide machine UFO. And we were both kind of like, had never seen anything like that. When he turned around, he caught it right after. As it was level. Yeah, as it was, it was level. It, yeah, it was, yeah, it stayed on a level, like, I guess what we call it, trajectory. Yeah. And uh, so. From then on. So that was, so our reactions is, was a really weird thing. But before that, like, what was so impressive to me, we all thought, like, he and I thought, I'm sure we thought this is going to end up being something normal or a comet or something. It's going to take an angle and show yeah, itself. And, and yeah. show itself. Holy shit, because first of all, it's over this, there's mountains on both sides, just right there over the sky. And it was, and it was big. And the thing that really struck me, for me, and I know this is maybe different than for Dave, but it, it was self-luminous. And it, so it was like, you could say it was, it was glowing, it was self-luminous, but it would pulse with this extreme power. That's the thing that really struck me was the power that it took to do this. And, and there were four pulses. And when it pulsed, it kind of went like, and there was no sonic boom. It was these, these movements. And, and seeing it descend in from 45 degree angle and hit down and then move, it was so to me this tremendous power because you could see it was a machine. It had these big three lights that weren't shooting yeah. like beams. Yeah, there were like, smaller lights with a larger white light in the middle of it. And they were pulsing too, but at a different tempo than the rest of the than craft. The, than the body of yeah. the craft. And that, that was the thing to me was, it was almost comical. It was like what you'd imagine drawn in a 1940s comic book. I wanted to retro, see Retro, kind of retro. Retro. Yeah. You, want, you drew it, right? I did, you, I did yeah. draw a picture of it, yeah. But our reaction w was pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at that drawing real quick. We'll get back to this. Bam, there it is. That is Dave Foling's drawing of the UFO. Again, I'll put links to all of this so you can look at it. Um, there it is up close. So, interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. First of all, what did he draw this on? Right? Like, could he not get uh, a better drawing? Anyway, um, let's get back to it. You know, um, I practice the quick draw my camera. I'm not going to be that UFO guy that doesn't pull out his camera, right? But I'm thinking the whole time I'm sitting there, I literally said out loud, I'm not even going to try to film this. Yeah. And I remember hearing that and going, it's, and in my mind, it just seemed like that's a weird thing. And then I also, in retrospect, I go, it's really weird that I didn't call you out on it right away. <laughs> uh, but neither was, except for that one time that Jeremy said, yeah, I'm not going to take, try and try and film this. Uh, neither of us spoke for the entire event. See, this is why I mean, I mean, you're just, you're taking it in. I, I sort of understand that. Like, cause then if you try to film it, then you're looking through the camera, right? And then you're not getting the actual sighting. So like, I honestly, I, I understand that a lot more than I ever did before, to be honest. Um, and, and it feel, felt like you were addressing somebody. But it wasn't, you weren't really addressing me. I hadn't said anything. Yeah. Uh, you it were was just saying it out weird. loud, like 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 somehow that thought popped into your head. And I, maybe it to was. To not do that. I, for me, it was just like, I was so astonished by what yeah. I was seeing. I, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I'm going to put a link to the rest of this so you guys can watch it um, and hear the rest of the story. They don't, you know, talk too much more about it. Um, but there are some more details. He kind of goes in and George Knapp jumps in a little bit. Um, what do you guys think? Is this an interesting um, story from Jeremy Corbell? Um, it is interesting that he had never had a sighting before, never claimed to have one. Um, you know, I am a little bit dubious of people that like have hundreds of sightings, right? That just seems odd. Um, but whatever. 
Um, you never know. It would make sense, too. The odds would be that some people would see more than others. I've never seen one. I want to, but I haven't. You know, I I think I've seen something, and then I realize it's not, right? It's something else. Uh, but anyway, yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments, and tell me what you guys think about, you know, filming UFOs and, and uh, you know, being stuck in awe and not, not actually being able to film it. Does that make sense to y'all? And what do you guys think of the drawing? And, um, yeah, what do you think of the story? All right, guys, that's uh, another video today. Again, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Vetted. I'm Patrick. Remember, every day's a gift. Peace.